Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Actors Area. All performers, actors and actresses, hope all is fantastic. Hope you are doing well and hope um, this new year is treating you fantastic. Um, so with that being said, a um, few things to get into today. Um, I just, I first, I want to commend Ricky Gervais for what he did last night. You know, I think what tends to happen is sometimes, and this is not everybody, but it seems that the more famous someone becomes in Hollywood, the less the less realistic they are, and they begin to do this shtick of I'm better than you, you know, I should be higher in society, and I hate that. I'm just going to be honest with you. I absolutely hate it, and the reason I hate it is because you're a human being just like me, just like Joe Blow, just like the homeless Indian guy in Bengali. You know, you don't need to treat me any different, like you're better than me, and there's a lot of that in Hollywood, and it's not everybody, right? But I feel like when people reach a certain status in fame, they begin to think that they're so much better and that they're gods and that they they can treat people a certain kind of way. And the reason I love what he did at the Golden Globes, his monologue, if you hadn't seen it yet, still trending on Twitter, he basically, he just put them in their place. And I, and I think what's awesome about that is, you know, he was so honest about it. Most people would 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 be fearful of career suicide of doing something like that. And I mean, he not only did that to Hollywood's so-called finest or elite, he did that to like companies like Apple and like Amazon, who basically are, you know, cooking food for the homeless with one hand and then pissing in it with the other hand, you know, and like just having so much done in the, in the realm of deception, you know, it's crazy to think about that, but that's kind of like, that's kind of the world that we face when we really dive into what's going on from a political and social standpoint. But I mean, I just applaud Ricky Gervais for what he did last night because that was so important. And to have the balls, I'm telling you, to do that made it even more phenomenal. Now, I've always said, if somebody tells the truth and you don't like it, that means that you're not accepting it for what it is. Like everybody that's clapping and laughing and like accepting it, they understand that it's the truth. It's the truth of the matter. And that leads me into today's topic. And so basically coming down to acting as if this was your last year. And so what's interesting is death has been on my mind all day long, right? And the most amazing thing is it's not death like I'm fearing I'm going to die or like somebody's coming to kill me. No, it's death in the realization that my life all of a sudden has a, an extreme sense of urgency to live my life in the way that I really want to and to do the things that I really want to. And that comes with knowing that not every day is guaranteed. Yes, I might live another 50 or 60 years, but then again, I might not. So either way, it's not up to me. It's up to life to decide that. But at the same time, I'm going to take the greatest advantage and embrace the life that I'm giving, given every single day as a person, as an actor, as a husband, as a teacher, as anything, you know, I'm going to embrace it and I'm going to embrace it with everything that I got. And so that leads me to today's topic, which, you know, for some people it's hard to think about, but for others, and it's probably a few, there's truth to it, right? How many times and I'm speaking to myself in general. How many times have we we said, you know what, I'll, I'll get back on track later on. I'll get back on track at a later date. 
I'll, I'll, I'll make sure that I do what I need to do um, when I get back with it, when I, when, at a better time. There is no perfect time, right? There's no perfect time to do anything. If something presents itself and it's in alignment with what you want to do, you should do it. Say yes. My wife and I, our biggest realization, our biggest intention of this year is to say yes to life. And six days in, it's absolutely amazing to think what life will do for you when you begin to say yes. Right. Absolutely amazing. You say yes to life. Life says, "Okay, let's do this. Right. Because you're no longer waiting for a better time. You're no longer sitting back saying, you know what, I'll do it tomorrow. Well, what happens? I've known a, a few of my friends who went to bed and didn't wake up. I'm not saying that's going to happen to you, but the, the idea that it could possibly happen should make you live your life to the fullest. You know, I got into this podcast business. I, I like. I did a podcast earlier on the NFL being rigged, you know, and there was a part of me for a small second, the small part of me that says, you know what, I probably shouldn't do this. And then the part of me that says, you know what, I got one life to live. I got to live it day to day, moment to moment. I'm going to do it because it's the truth. Right. And you take that same idea and you put it into your acting. What do I really want to do as an actor? What do I really want to experience as an actor? And I'm talking about what I really feel like I want and what you really feel like you want. And that's not thinking what you have to do, right? Because, okay, for example, you could be thinking that I really want to be in this big ass movie that's, you know, shown around the world. And I go on a press tour and everything else. When in actuality, you may be only doing that for approval, which you really need is to do an independent film or community theater to really re like not maybe the kindle or rekindle the love that you have for this that brings you so much joy. You know, sometimes we get so caught up in our minds that we think we need something because other people are in our ears about what we need to do when in actuality you can get the you can get greater joy from doing a student film than you would being on some big production. So the most important thing is just getting all the BS out of the way, all the all the the noise, rather. I call it the emotional noise because sometimes, you know, like me, I've had rejection complexes, wanting approval, wanting people to like me and to love me. So I started doing stuff that I thought would do that. And the universe basically put up a wall and said, you know what, you can't go any further because you're doing it for all the wrong reasons. Right. So I stripped away all that stuff. And I'm like, you know what? I'm ready to do it for the right reasons. And I can be excited being an extra. Before, I was so embarrassed to be an extra because I thought of what people would, 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 would say about me. But now I'm like, you know what? Hell yeah. If I get an opportunity to be on set, I love being on set. I'll be an extra, you know? And then I can turn around and be the lead the next week or supporting or principal. Whatever it is, I make myself open and I say yes to what I know is going to bring me the true joy. So I always have to ask myself, what do I really want out of this life? What do I really want for myself? And when you start to do that, it all of a sudden becomes a snowball effect where you begin to just do stuff you want to do. Anytime something even comes up that you don't want to do, immediately, instantly, and intuitively, you know, right? And you can move right away from it. You don't have to, you don't have to deal with it. Um, so it's important to know that, like, you want to create a sense of urgency, not in a sense that you're lacking, but in a sense that it brings you so much joy. Like when you take your last breath, you know, whatever it is, whenever it is, you want to be able to say, man, I gave this my best shot. I gave it my very best shot. Right. And I can transition knowing that I did that as opposed to oh. <laughs> I didn't do all the stuff I wanted to do in life. <laughs> you know, nobody wants to be at that point, right? We all want to be like, like dying with that smile on our face saying, you know what? We gave it everything and we can move on to the next level knowing that that was our truth, right? So in relation to acting, all this comes down to is just taking inventory of what your career looks like, okay? 
let's say you got an agent that you don't necessarily want to be with, but you feel like you have to cut them loose because you're doing them a disservice. If you don't want this person to be your agent, guess what? That energy carries over and that person does nothing for you, right? Does nothing for you. So cut them loose, right? So then you can find somebody who you want to be your agent, who wants to be your agent, and then that energy produces, okay? Let's say acting class. You're taking an acting class. You're working with a certain coach, and you feel like you have to be with that coach or you have to take that class. Newsflash, you don't have to do anything. You've got to want to do it. You've got to want to work with this teacher. If you're not getting excited to go to this class, you're in the wrong class or you don't need to be in class at all right? Find out where the feeling of desire is, okay? And then understand, you know what? This could be my last day to do this. That amplifies it, and that that moves you into action knowing that there's never any time to waste, you know? That's our biggest issue as human beings is we always think that there's time to waste And you see people wasting their lives for 60 or 70 years only to look back and wish that they could do it differently. There's no time to waste. You should always, even if it's sitting on the couch watching a TV show, if that's what you feel like you want to be doing, you are a success. Right? Why? Because you want to be there. You're not doing it by default. Okay? You're not doing it by default. When you want to do something, I promise you, and you can take this to the bank, it's always going to work out in your favor. And the same goes for acting. When you want to do this, right? Just ask yourself, even if it doesn't come right away, what do I really want for myself in acting? What do I really, really, really want? Like what would make me happy? And and like I said, move past thinking about what everybody else wants, right? Right? And really get down to the core of what you want. And that could be something as simple as, I just want to be on set. So you may be led to go and work a production job and all of a sudden fall in love with something in production that was just waiting for you to recognize it. I've got a really good friend who I've known for quite some time who moved to L.A., um, wanted to act, but really kind of found out that acting was more about what it would do as far as how other people viewed her and less about what she wanted to do for herself, right? So when she finally decided to shift in what she wanted to do for herself, she found another job in production. I think she became like a puppeteer and she's doing so well. As a puppeteer, and you see her posting photos, and she's smiling, she's having a good time, she's creating, and she loves it, right? She loves it, and that's the key that was present with puppeteering that wasn't present in acting, you know? Now, I'm not saying you have to get out of acting, but you've got to find out that narrow groove, what it is that's bringing you electricity, what it is that's bringing you joy, what it is that's bringing you desire, you're popping out of bed every day if you're blessed with life you know, to go after it. And when you discover that, you're going to succeed without question because there is nothing. The universe will allow nothing to get in your way when that feeling is resonant with authenticity. There's nothing that's going to get in your way. Paulo Coelho said, when you want something, the universe conspires with everything else to bring it to you. And that's the honest truth. If something is not unfolding, it means, guess what? The desire for it is not there. You may have to shift. You may have to clear some things out. But once the desire is there for it, it's going to open up for you. You could be listening to this, and you and, and in six, seven, eight months' time, you've already booked like 20 different roles, right? You're on a Netflix hit or something like that. Like That's how easy it is, but find the desire, and you know what? As the title states, live like it's your last year of acting. Live like it's your last day of acting, right? Desire to leave it all out on the field, all out on set, 
And then if you get another day tomorrow, wake up. Yes. Celebrate it. I get another chance to go after this again. I'm on fire and I want to live it to the fullest. Right. I want to take advantage of it. I want to contact that director. I want to like go to this meetup. I want to go to this improv class, whatever it is. Follow the desire. And when you follow the desire, once again, the joy is unspeakable. The joy is immense, right? Absolutely immense, immeasurable. And you find that you, you, you gain so much freedom out of that, so much peace, so much joy that you never want to live any other way than that, right? So think about it. If you were to die, at the end of this year, six months, whatever it is. We don't need to get up in, in specifics, but let's say you just had a year. Would you or how would you approach your acting career? How would you go about that? And wait to see what comes in because it'll surprise you. And, and, and move from a place of joy, not from a place of fear, right? Like... Be very objective with this because I don't want to send you into a spiraling like tizzy thinking that you're going to die or something like that. But at the same time, I don't know. We don't know. You don't know. Nobody knows. But you can take advantage of that and leave it all out there. Right. A movie I want to leave with you that you should definitely check out before um, when you get some time. It's called Last Holiday. It wasn't really a big hit at the box office. But it stars Queen Latifah and LL Cool J. And this movie is so amazing because Queen Latifah, if you hadn't seen it, she plays this woman uh, who is basically living out a meander existence at this Macy's type department store in New Orleans. And she has big dreams. She even creates like a vision board or vision book. But she's afraid to go after it. So she goes to the doctor and she gets this diagnosis that is faulty it's it's a it's a it's a misdiagnosis it's meant for somebody else but not for her the machine winds up being broken but then the doctor tells her you only have three months to live well she gets three months to live and all of a sudden she is doing everything she ever wanted to do she's cashing out bonds she's cashing out her savings she's um you know she flew to russia um she's eating all the most amazing foods, like she's working with the best best chef and she's stopping at nothing all because someone told her she had three months to live, right? So she's living this most amazing life, carefree, speaking her mind, you know, being authentic to herself and then she finds out she's not dying. She finds out that the diagnosis was wrong because the machine was malfunctioning but now she can never go back to how life was before because she realized what it means to just live and live full out right and that last holiday is for each and every one of us to know that we can do that without getting the diagnosis that we're dying right we can do that without the diagnosis and really step in to our truth and really step into what we want out of this thing called acting. Guys, as always, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for joining me. Take care. We'll talk soon.